Over 60 years ago in 1955, our history as the North Penn school system began with the creation of North Penn High School, a journey of excellence that led to the consolidation of the area's schools into one united community. Each decade, each year, each day, each hour, through passion, commitment, service, and genuine pride, the many architects of yesteryear have made what North Penn School District is today. The building blocks of the district are the North Penn staff, students, and community. Whether a bus driver, a facilities worker, a volunteer, a dedicated student, coach, or a teacher, each and every one of our North Penn family members has been an integral part of our success. Our buildings are nationally recognized for energy efficiency. We celebrate reading, diversity, and we continue to receive numerous state and federal grants for our district because of the creativity and dedication of this North Penn family throughout the years. In the classroom, teachers inspire a love of reading, a passion for learning, and encourage students to reach higher for success. Each teacher's passion for their students is evident as they adapt to the ever-changing educational climate. With this exceptional guidance, our students, our schools, and our district have gained national recognition for academic excellence each and every year. Outside the classroom, advisors and coaches model leadership on and off the field, develop compassion for others through school and community service, and encourage students to excel at their passion through commitment and dedication, and to take pride in themselves, in the Columbia and Blue, and in the North Penn School District. At all levels, North Penn students have been recognized for numerous local, state, and national achievements in academics, activities, and athletics. From this dedicated community, North Penn students have been given the building blocks of success both inside and outside of the classroom. From the first day of kindergarten to high school graduation, our students do great things each and every day. With the solid foundation received during their time at North Penn, our graduates have gone on to make a significant impact in science and technology, in local government, in entrepreneurship, in music, in business, and so much more. In every corner of success, there is a knight or a maiden. And of course, many alumni have come back full circle to their alma mater to influence the next generation to dream big and achieve greatness. Nearly 50,000 students have turned their tassels as North Penn graduates, and much more will follow in the years to come. As these new graduates embark on their journey into the world, we hope they hold North Penn close to their hearts and remember their past as they build for their future. Tonight, we celebrate our Knights of Honor, those North Penn students and staff who have shown their exceptional leadership, outstanding dedication, and a legendary North Penn pride to do incredible things for the North Penn School District and for their community. As John Quincy Adams once said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Tonight, we will honor our leaders of the North Penn School District. We will never forget the past, the people who have made North Penn the best that it can be, today, tomorrow, and always. I must be a real sap because that kind of stuff, it gets me every time and every year they add to it and it gets better and better. Good evening everybody and welcome to the third annual Knights of Honor induction ceremony. My name is Kevin Monero. I am a 1997 graduate of North Penn High School. I currently coach, teach, and advise at North Penn, and I am honored, and that is not a term that I use lightly, truly honored to be here as your MC tonight. As the Knights of Honor welcome Rick Carroll, Cindy Loudon, and Yolanda Wisher. They will join past inductees Steve Frederick, June Brown, Michael Haney, Davis Giersch, Jim Finnemeyer, Bonnie Rosen, Barry Chasen, Benjamin Weber, and Carolyn Murphy. That list of names that I just read is pretty incredible. And every year, the Knights of Honor makes that list more and more incredible. Also, 
Like pretty much every English teacher ever, I like to talk and pontificate a lot. I think that's why they keep letting me do this, because if I talk a little bit tonight, I'll talk a little bit less come Monday morning. So I'll get a little bit out of my system tonight. Um, but for the most part, we are here tonight to hear a lot more great things from a lot of great people. But among those great people, I will warn you, there are several English teachers that are going to be speaking up here tonight. So if you do have dinner reservations afterwards, you might want to reconsider. But, but one of our speakers is Selma Robinson, and she says she's going to balance things out a little bit. So we'll be in great shape. While I do like to talk a lot, I have also learned that there is one way to get somebody to stop talking, get them off the stage, and that's to play them off the stage with some music. So at this time, I would ask that if you are able to do so, please stand. Please welcome the Bridal Path Elementary School Vocal Ensemble, who, by the way, became very famous last year when they starred on B101 during the holiday season. They will lead us tonight in the singing of our national anthem and the North Penn alma mater. All right, thank you very much. Please be seated and make yourselves comfortable. That is Michael Clank, by the way, who is getting all those wonderful voices ready for Matt Clank when they get up here to North Penn High School. Pretty hard to imagine if they're that good now, what they're going to be like when they come up here. It really does all start in elementary school, and who knows? Maybe one of those kids, many years from now, will be coming up here tonight to receive one of these awards. It is my pleasure at this point to turn things over to our superintendent of the North Penn School District for his opening remarks, please welcome Dr. Kurt Dietrich. Good evening. Tonight is the third time I've taken the stage to recognize individuals as Knights of Honor. And each year I'm moved by their accomplishments, their incredible intelligence and their incredible influence in this community and beyond. And this year we had three knights who embody the long-standing excellence for which North Penn is known. You will learn a great deal about our inductees tonight from those who introduced them, and there's even further information in tonight's program. And year after year, I look forward to hearing some personal stories about our honorees that bring them to life and serve as examples as to why they're being named Knights of Honor. 
I have the privilege of knowing both Rick Carroll and Cindy Loudon, and I do not use the word privilege lightly, for I understand and am humbled by the legacies both of them individually built for North Penn. I see them as two pillars of excellence that serve as the strong foundation of not only North Penn High School, but this entire school district and community. And where would we be without Rick's relentless, relentless pursuit of providing the absolute best aquatics program for our students and community? And where would we be without Cindy's passion for bringing the arts to our schools and to the North Penn community? But most importantly, where would many of the people in the audience this evening be without Rick and Cindy's friendship and mentorship? And I've never met Yolanda Wisher, but I am looking forward to the day when I can. When I first learned about Yolanda a few years back, when her work as a poet was being recognized, and she was being named Poet Laureate for Montgomery County and then the city of Philadelphia. And I remember thinking, what an incredible honor for this woman. I was proud to say she's a North Penn graduate. And then, since she came to North Penn and spoke to our students and community, and after reviewing her nomination, I came to find she has many more accomplishments and talents in addition to writing poetry. Yolanda, to me, personifies the hopes and dreams of every young student coming to fruition. I'm also confident that Yolanda herself is still dreaming and will, will continue to impress for years to come and continue to bring honor to North Penn. I truly wish she was here tonight, and I thank her family for being here in her place while she's at poetry residence across the country. So congratulations to Rick, Cindy, and Yolanda. And let's get this show moving and learn more about these incredible nights of honors. Thank you very much. Tonight we're honoring people that are part of North Penn's past, but I want all the retirees who are in the room, and there are many great ones here tonight, I, I want you to understand that kids are no different than they ever were. The ones who are in the classroom now are the same. They just, they just say different things. So this morning in my second period journalism class, I told my students what I was doing tonight. And I said, oh, the room's going to be full of some of the greatest you know, people that ever came to North Penn. And they said, oh, yeah, it's going to be a room full of goats. Because that's what goat means now, is greatest of all time. And they recognize the power of what you have all done, even though they just say it in a little different way. The late Rose Kennedy once wrote, when you hold your baby in your arms the first time and you think of all the things you can say and do to influence him, it's a tremendous responsibility. What you do with him can influence not only him, but everyone he meets, and not for a day or a month or a year, but for time and eternity. Of all the events that take place at North Penn High School each year, and of everything that I get to see and be a part of in my roles here, this is the one that I believe, above all others, is the most inspiring, the most impressive, and the most humbling. Rose Kennedy talked about influence. Well, it's very difficult to articulate the enormity of influence in this room tonight. Everyone who is here this evening, those who will introduce our honorees, those who will enter into the Knights of Honor, and so many of you in the audience, define what true public education and what strong community are all about. Rose Kennedy talked about how we influence our children and the eternal ramifications that that has. But in the world of education, that same principle applies to teachers, coaches, theater directors, and the students who become leaders themselves because of the education they had from all of those people. Tonight, we will hear about those ripples of influence that started with a splash into a swimming pool, a request to direct a musical, or a poem in an English class. Look around you. No, seriously, look around you. The influence that is in this room right now is palpable. And it's my honor at this time to introduce one of those people in the North Penn School District who herself, even in retirement, although she's not very good at retiring, 
So I'm going to see Bert Hines back there. That's what retirement looks like, okay? That's how you retire. But I want to introduce somebody who herself comes to work still each day to ensure that this ripple effect can continue in our classrooms, in competition, and in our community. Here to introduce our first inductee is North Penn High School Assistant Athletic Director and a retired teacher and coach, and maybe most importantly, devoted community member, Mrs. Selma Robinson. Well, I'm already emotional, and we didn't even start to talk about Rick yet, so uh, we'll give it a try here. Um, I'd like to say good evening to everyone. A very special welcome to Rick Carroll's wife, Ann Louise. Those of us who have known Rick and Ann Louise over the years know that she has been an absolute saint to put up with his shenanigans for 55 plus years of blissful marriage. Thank you, Ann Louise. Rick's children are also in the audience tonight. Leanne, Brad and his wife, Rhonda. Grandchildren, Peyton, Avery, and Nora are also here with us this evening. Thank you to the North Penn School District for allowing me the honor of introducing Rick Carroll this evening. My guess is, is that everyone else must have been busy and since I have no social life, my Friday night was wide open. So here I am. I'd like to also congratulate Cindy and Yolanda as they join Rick in the prestigious group of the Knights of Honor. Congratulations. A side note to Rick and a disclaimer to the group. I am so glad that Rick's name falls first in the alphabet tonight. That means we get to go first, Rick, and we do not have to follow the queen of the theater who knows how to woo a crowd and a poet laureate who can mesmerize an audience with her spoken words. Sorry, Rick, this is all you got. So, on with my assignment. On a very serious note, uh, the North Penn community was a hotbed for swimming talent back in the late 60s and early 70s. The competitive swimmers that chose to swim year-round to hone their skills traveled far and wide to get additional training over the winter months. That was no longer the case when North Penn School District decided to build state-of-the-art natatorium in the new high school in 1971. Finding the right person to run the aquatics program was crucial. Many community members had high expectations for the program. The school board wanted a program to address the needs of both youngsters and adults, ensuring that the taxpayers felt that they were getting a return on their investment. Thank goodness for Jim Wild, Rick's college friend. He was a health and PE teacher and a football coach at North Penn. He contacted Rick to let him know that there was great opportunity that he should pursue at the new high school. How lucky were we that Rick interviewed and was hired to be the first North Penn Community Aquatics Program Director. Rick hit the ground running. He visited local pools and contacted key swimming people to get the much needed support to facilitate a top-notch swimming program. From the beginning, Rick set the bar high. Rick wore several hats through his career at North Penn. He was the aquatic director, a health and PE teacher, and a boys swim coach. In honor of his dedication and the success of the program, the natatorium carries his name. And on a side note, I know he's very proud of that. As the aquatic director, he organized a Learn to Swim program for school-aged children. He made sure that sophomore aquatics was a required course for all North Penn students, with the primary goal of every single student being water safe before they graduated high school. 
Fourth grade students across the district were bused to the high school during the school day for one week of water safety instruction. Evening courses were offered for community members to take advantage of the beautiful new pool. There was scuba diving, synchronized swimming, side note, I was terrible at that, adult swim lessons, lifeguard training, and family swims. Rick was quoted in a local newspaper when he retired in 1998 stating, when you put in as much time as I have, you just want to make sure it continues to be successful and everything flows smoothly. Rick's wish came true. The program is still thriving, so much so that the North Penn School District built a brand new natatorium over a decade ago to accommodate the needs of the program and the community. When you walk into the Rick Carroll Natatorium, it is a buzz of activity. There are still over 1,000 sophomores participating in aquatics classes during the school day. Swimming programs for all ages continue to occur after school hours throughout the year. Most notably, five decades later, our competitive programs are still the cream of the crop in the state of Pennsylvania. Recently, our girls and boys high school water polo teams were crowned state champions last season. The girls swimming and diving team was PIAA state champions, and the boys team was runner-up. North Penn has always been in the mix for championships since Rick planted the seed in 1971. Since the program's inception, we have won 15 state swimming and diving championships, two national championships, and 15 water polo high school state championships. From everything that I said, this is what I personally would like all our guests to take away as we honor Rick Carroll this evening. He created a legacy that is unmatched. Unless you are intimately involved in the program, you truly cannot grasp the influence that Rick continues to have on the day-to-day -day operations of the aquatics program. Sure, he stops in to check to make sure that we're not messing up his program, but more importantly, most everyone that is teaching or coaching has been in the long lineage of connections that Rick has created over the years. He mentored all the coaches and instructors throughout his time at North Penn. In turn, those individuals that were mentored by him directly have mentored the current coaches and instructors. There are grandchildren of his former swimmers that are swimming at North Penn. Rick's influence is an extended web that runs through the North Penn swimming family. Under his leadership, the program cre created a culture of inclusion, confidence, commitment, and sportsmanship. As I have gotten older, I finally get it. Few others have matched the foundation that Rick laid and nurtured over the years. Rick emphasized program rather than working for short-term success. As time passes, we truly begin to understand the impact that Rick Carroll has had on the swimming community in the North Penn area. His legacy lives on through tens of thousands of swimmers that have participated in the high school aquatics classes, the North Penn Community Aquatic Program, North Penn Aquatic Club, and the North Penn High School water polo swimming and diving teams. Due to his influence, countless children in our community have become water safe and many student athletes have gone on to excel in water sports at the high school, collegiate, and national levels. Rick Carroll is an honest to goodness living legend. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce Rick Carroll as he accepts this very deserving award tonight. Congratulations, Rick, for receiving the Knights of Honor Award. Rick.
Same guy, same tie. <laughs> North Penn Board of School Directors, Dr. Curtis Deitch, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Pete Mickelson, North Penn High School Principal, and Kathy Andre, Community and Development Specialist. Any wonder why I chose Selma to speak for me tonight? I first met her about 50 years ago. She and her dad came to an open house that we had for the new swimming pool. She had been swimming at Methacton. She wasn't sure whether she was going to be a participant in our program or not until she walked into the girls' locker room and saw the Formica tabletops and the counters that were there. That sold her. <laughs> she was easy to get. Perhaps the easiest catch we've ever had, and that was before recruiting even happened. Selma has been an outstanding person for the swimming program. She's the only person in the history of our school to have been captain of the girls' swimming team as a sophomore, a junior, and a senior. She went on to have a successful career, became a high school coach, won a state championship, and then a national championship. I don't know, Selma, you're next. I'd also like to thank Mary Fakish, who is a swimming mom extraordinaire. I thank her for the bio write-up that you find in your program for this evening. That was very comprehensive, Mary, and thank you very much. I'd like to offer my congratulations to Cindy Loudon, our renowned theater director. Cindy, it's a pleasure to be here tonight when they're honoring you. I'm happy to be in your presence. And also to Yolanda Wisher, Philadelphia's Poet Laureate. Both of these people I congratulate as being new Knights of Honor. When a person is honored by the people they worked with and the students that they taught and the athletes that they've coached, it's a most coveted honor. I'm very proud and humbled to be a Knight of Honor and stand beside the outstanding list of past recipients. A lot of things that Selma said tonight were in my speech. I swear that she must have taken it sometime in the past couple weeks. Uh, so I'm going to kind of kind of pass over some of the things that I was going to mention, but I do have to mention a couple of things that are very important. The program began in 1971. And as Selma mentioned, the school district and the school board of directors wanted everybody in the community to be part of the program. They had paid a lot of money for the new school, and they wanted everybody to come in and participate in the program. So we had to offer swimming programs during the school day. We had to offer them in the after school and in the evenings, on Saturdays, and any other time that was available. The program is a product of many people working together to develop what has become one of the outstanding aquatic programs in the state. It's impossible for me to give credit to all the people who unselfishly contributed to the success of our community program, but there are several people that I would be remiss if I did not mention their names. First of all, I want to give thanks to the teachers of the Learn to Swim classes. You were without a doubt the backbone of our most popular program. People like Ruth Benner, Betty Hunter, Jean Duddy, Dolly Marshall, Elaine Waterfield, Ruthie Tu, Jean Matthew, Pat Vogel, Judy Richards, and of course, Natalie Martin. You may recognize 
some of these people because they were teachers in our school district who were actually doing double duty, teaching during the week, teaching in our aquatic programs on Saturday and in the evening. These teachers were the foundation on which the North Penn Community Aquatic Program was built. I'd also like to thank Sally Freeman, who was an elementary physical education teacher, and she was in charge and leadership of the elementary program, where all third and fifth graders were bused into the high school during the day for classes in Learn to Swim for third grade and water safety instruction for the fifth graders. In the beginning, Pat Henry and I taught the swimming program classes during the day and taught or coached the girls and boys varsity swim teams after school. Pat led the girls to the first PIA state championship for girls in the history of our school, and she is now senior associate director of athletics at Harvard University and has been there for close to 40 years. Pat Henry and Chip Stewart were the very first aquatic club coaches. And through the years, credit for leadership in the aquatic club has fallen on these outstanding people. Mike Sinkinson, Jim Cadle, Bill Moser, Gabby Myers, Lisa McClay, Ellen Vondercombe, Michael O'Neill, Dan Dunnigan, Selma Robinson, Matt Christopa, and the Fakish brothers, Brian and Jeff, and quite a few more. And not to be overlooked were all the athletes who came back each summer and helped coach the summer swim teams at Norgwen and Lansdale and Hatfield and Tomensen. They were the role models and the future of North Penn swimming. In my opinion, the greatest group of high school swimming coaches in the state were Pat Henry, Selma Robinson, Matt Weiser, Bill Berardelli, Bill Bartle, Brian Daly, Brian Fakish, and the present head coach of all our competitive programs, Jeff Fakish. The diving coaches were Sue McDonald and Kyle Goldbacher. Water polo coaches, Bill Bartle, Brian Fakish, Katie Grunmeyer, and now our head coach, Jason Grubb. This group of coaches has won 30 state championships and two national championships since the inception of the program in 1971. I look back in admiration of all you have accomplished. And I'm, I'm gonna digress for just one second here to pay special tribute to uh, Coach Bortle. He's the current AD at North Penn. Bill Bortle is the only coach in the state of Pennsylvania to have won state championships in girls and boys swimming and girls and boys water polo. What an accomplishment. I'd also like to thank Russ Stewart for his mathematical genius in writing the first computer program for District 1 swimming. And as AD in the early 70s, he helped to transport our swimmers to the state championship meet. Thank you also to Don Ryan, who was the AD during my coaching career, and to Ken Weir, who was the Director of Community Relations. And I'm also thankful to see Dr. Juan Bond here tonight, because he's probably the guy that offered me the greatest challenge, and I failed. I could never teach him to swim. <laughs> I think he did play a mean tuba. Kathy Acuff was the CFO and registrar of the Community Aquatics Program, and she did this for over 40 years. She handled all the registrations and all the financial reports for our program. Kathy was also the official scorekeeper for boys and girls swimming teams, and she was the person who was the secretary for the District 1 Championship Meet and also at the state championships. I thank her for her loyalty, for her dedication to me and to the North Penn Community Aquatic Program and also to the competitive program. 
North Penn parents, you are the best, the most supportive, enthusiastic, knowledgeable, and loyal parents anywhere. Thank you for being Uber drivers, fundraisers, officials, amateur psychologists, cheerleaders, and with only a very few exceptions, amazingly supportive of our coaches. To all swimmer divers and water polo players, you are and have been the blood and guts of the North Penn swimming tradition. You have won many, many state championships, and you have excelled in everything that you have been asked to do. I know that you will continue to take pride in your accomplishments. They come about because of hard work and dedication, great sacrifices, and positive peer pressure. Thank you to my friends who are here tonight. You keep me young, and your friendship and support will never be taken lightly. And for those of you that I golf with, if you'd give me a few of those more three-foot putts, I'd be indebted to you. <laughs> Selma has mentioned my family, but I don't want to pass them by lightly. My wife of 56 years, Ann Louise, is here with me tonight, as she always is standing beside me. Without her, none of this would have happened. She got me introduced into swimming, and for that, it led us from Easton all the way down here to North Penn. My daughter, Leanne, and Nora are here this evening, and her husband, Joe Myone, is on his way here from Penn Charter with Aaron and uh, Lydia. They were involved in varsity sports programs there today. My son Brad and his wife Rhonda are here tonight, and with them is Mackenzie and Peyton and Avery. My oldest son, Rack, lives in Wilmington, North Carolina with his wife Julie and their son, Kyle, and their daughter, Lauren. They're unable to be with us tonight, but I'm sure they're here in my mind anyway, in their hearts too. I am truly humbled to receive the Knight of Honor Award. To those of you who continue to teach, coach, and train in the North Penn Community Aquatics Program, I say, carry on. My heart will always be with you. Thank you. Rick, on behalf of the school district, I'd like to present this to you, this crystal. It reads, North Penn Knights of Honor, 2018, Rick Carroll, for making a significant contribution to the North Penn School District, the community, and his chosen career. Congratulations. I think the most obvious reason why Rick Carroll deserves to be one of our Knights of Honor is because in the entirety of that speech, he hardly talked about himself at all. And that is remarkable, the number of people that he recognizes as being part of what made him who he is. And actually, I want to especially thank you for mentioning Sally Freeman's name because she was my elementary school PE teacher at General Nash. 
Coach Carroll talked a lot about swimming tonight, and he just said a few things to me on the side that completely 100% corroborate what I was going to say. We're going to uh, sort of remove the, the ruse and the cover here from his life. I'm going to tell everybody right now a little secret. He is a much bigger baseball fan than he is swim fan, and that's really the best part about you. A lot of people say North Penn should be really good at every sport just because we're big. But with our size also comes a very vast community. And it is not easy to unite a vast community. It can only be done by somebody who is so dedicated and works so hard as somebody like Rick Carroll. So thank you very much, Coach Carroll. So I'll be brutally honest. Ever since I started teaching at North Penn, I have felt incredible pressure. Pressure to give my English students what so many of the greats of the English department gave me and gave so many other students before me and after me. Our next inductee is one example of a student who was undoubtedly influenced by the experiences she had in that little world in the back of the building known affectionately as APOD. And here to introduce her is one of those APOD greats herself who continues today to influence students more than she probably even knows. Please welcome North Penn High School English teacher, Janet Kratz. Hello. Uh, as you heard earlier from Dr. Dietrich, Yolanda is not able to be here tonight, but the good news is that you will meet her and that will happen when I'm finished. And in the meantime, you will also be meeting her family who are here with great pride and deservedly so. So when you hear what I have to say about Yolanda, you will know exactly why I nominated her. George Orwell once suggested that to write vividly, all writers should think wordlessly. Just try to do that sometime and you will quickly realize how difficult it is. But it is this very gift that makes the poetry of Yolanda Wisher, including the poetry she wrote in high school, so unique and so powerful. When Yolanda was a student here in the early 90s, there wasn't a member of the English department who did not know who she was, even though only a handful of us had the privilege of teaching her. As English teachers, we generally agree that some students, whether on the stage or the page, have something special something that honestly cannot be taught, a gift for language or performance that we can model and at best inspire, but which must come from within. Yolanda has that gift. I remember her creative writing mentor, Dr. the legendary Dr. Kathy Walsh, sharing a poem with me in which Yolanda described a strawberry with sensual imagery far beyond her years. When Yolanda was named Poet Laureate of Montgomery County in 1999, and later of Philadelphia in 2016, I wasn't surprised. Of the thousands of student writers I've encountered in 35 years at North Penn High School, Yolanda Wisher is one of the greats. Yolanda's gifts extended beyond academics. A passionate basketball player, Yolanda brought the same fierceness to the court as the classroom. When Yolanda played defense, her opponent did not hold on to the ball for long. Always scrappy, Yolanda didn't stop until she forced a turnover. She made things happen. And it is this intersection of gift and grit that has paved the way for Yolanda's success in her career as a professional poet and musician. In our highly technological era, I believe that the arts are more important than ever. It is the arts that remind us of what we share, of what makes us human, and I wanted students to see the impact that professional writers can have on our lives. With that goal in mind, I proposed and received a generous grant from North Penn's Educational Foundation for a speaker series entitled Celebrate the Arts. Yolanda was the lead speaker and spent an entire day at North Penn, first meeting with a small group of creative writing students and later performing for the entire school. The creative writing students were mesmerized as Yolanda delivered some of her own poetry and then shifted her focus to their writing, coaching students to write a poem inspired by their address. Yolanda also reflected on her years at North Penn 
and urged students to take advantage of opportunities that she, as a teacher, knows are denied to students in less affluent school districts. Some of her fondest memories, she said, center on her time in Dr. Walsh's creative writing group as students sipped tea and shared their work. There is no doubt that the magic of that classroom experience laid the founda foundation for her future career. Although I saw the instant rapport Yolanda struck with the creative writing students, I was a bit concerned about how she would connect with an audience of more than 1,500 students, many of whom, while very happy for time away from the traditional classroom, were not necessarily fans of poetry. My fears were utterly unfounded. Seconds after she called out, hello, North Penn, I realized that Yolanda was not merely a gifted poet. She's the consummate entertainer. She delivered her poetry, sang original songs, and had the student body snapping along with her. Afterwards, I heard more than a few students commenting on how cool the assembly was. Mission accomplished. Well known in the Philadelphia area, Yolanda is a go-to source for any articles about poetry and is cited in the Philadelphia Inquirer in the same breath as Sonia Sanchez. Poet, singer, songwriter, and teacher, Yolanda has cra crafted a career as creative as her poetry, and her work is far from finished. Currently in residence in Colorado as part of the Aspen Institute, Yolanda is working on two books, a second book of poetry that focuses on her family's history in Ambler, and a collection of essays about her work with poetry, including speeches and poetry exercises she created while Poet Laureate. Always pushing her artistic boundaries, Yolanda is about to open her own studio at the Cherry Street Pier on the Delaware River waterfront, where she will not only write, sing, and record her own work, but will also teach writing workshops and hold collaborative retreats and jam sessions with the public. She continues to curate poetry events throughout the city and will launch a spoken word and music podcast later this year. North Penn can be very proud to claim, be able to claim Yolanda Wisher, our own Poet Laureate, as Knight of Honor. Yolanda is currently in Colorado, completing a writing residency, but she will accept her award remotely and would like to share a few words of gratitude. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry I couldn't join you in person this evening. I'm in Woody Creek, Colorado, doing a month-long writing residency as part of the Aspen Institute. But thank you to the North Penn School District Knights of Honor program for bestowing this incredible honor upon me. And thank you to Janet Kratz for nominating me and delivering what I'm sure was a glorious introduction. There are so many people I share this award with. I was overwhelmed with all of their names, so I turned them into a poem to share as my acceptance speech. This is a poem of gratitude and thanks. This is a poem of memory and comeuppance. This is a poem for all the teachers who saw the gift my great grandmother saw in me and raised it up. Mrs. Monroe in kindergarten. Mrs. Delp who hung my poem about the butterfly in the gifted resource room when I wasn't considered gifted. Mrs. Parker the only black lady teacher in the school, so elegant and poised in her pencil skirts and heels, who never was my classroom teacher, but gave me copies of Shange and Giovanni and Sanchez to balance home on the handlebars of my bike. Mr. Staley, who played cello duets with me in the living room. The librarians who bound my first book of poems in fifth grade and gave it a card catalog number. Mr. Slug, who read us Stephen King novels during middle school lunch. Mrs. Williams, who taught us how to auger maps. Mr. Romano, who helped me get my poem published in Scholastics Magazine. And Mr. Writer, who taught us what democracy really was, never revealing if he was a Republican or a Democrat. For Dr. Mangano, who made a way. For Miss Moser, who made field hockey warriors out of ninth graders, and Mr. Crawford, who taught us how to fast break like a luxury watch. 
Mrs. Funk, who broke down geometry. My fellow honoree, Cindy Loudon, who gave me a stage to direct my very first play. Mrs. Martin, who gave me her annotated copy of Moby Dick. And Dr. Walsh, who made an eighth period breakfast club out of poets and one day turned her classroom over to me so I could teach her 10th graders how to write a poem. For the poets and orchestra kids and the astronomy club, for the friends who bumped booties at house parties and learned steps for talent shows, for the teammates who taught me loss and triumph and loyalty, for the racists and sexists who gave me purpose, for the bullies and haters who made me strong, for my beautiful and clever mother who gave me everything she had and believed I deserved, who stood up out of her youth and wouldn't take no for an answer, who scraped together change to send me to summer writing programs, who let me go so I could grow, who woke up in darkness with hands holding her own dreams by the throat and knocked down doors and stared folks down and made the sun shine on me, who kept my gifts safe until I could own them myself. Thank you, Mom. To my husband, Mark, who has been my unconditional partner in love and art for the last 20 years. You make me feel like everything is possible. And for my son, Theo, thank you for reminding me to dream every day and to be an artist in everything I do. I love you to Jupiter and back. This is a poem of gratitude and thanks. This is a poem of memory and comeuppance. This is a bookmark for the next black girl poet in the suburbs who needs a blueprint. Thank you for the honor. And we would at this time like to please welcome Yolanda Wisher's mother, Yvonda Wisher, and her son, Theo Palacio, to the stage to accept the award on their behalf. she was going to get me. How am I supposed to follow that? I would like to thank the Lord because without him, none of this would be possible. Having Yolanda as a daughter has meant there has never, and I mean never, been a dull moment. We have gone and seen places that were once dreams, but we made it there. On behalf of my daughter Yolanda, I would like to thank you Thank the teachers, the friends, the angels along the way of this journey. That is not over. I would also like to thank the family members that are not with us today, but were a vital part of Yolanda's gift. To the family members that are here, thank you, especially to Mark and Theo, who are always supporting Yolanda. This award was a cumulative effort by having a village to support us as the African proverb states, that it takes a village to raise a child, and it has. I would be remiss, though, if I did not mention Yolanda's sisters, Yvette and Yashanda, because sibling rivalry is alive and well, and it never dies, as well as the love that we share with each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and may God bless you.
We would like uh, Yolanda to have this, and it reads North Penn Knights of Honor, 2018 Yolanda Wisher, for making a significant contribution to the North Penn School District, the community, and her chosen career. Congratulations, Yolanda Wisher. We have, in so many ways, become such a data-driven society, and that's not just education. It's a lot of other things as well, and sometimes it just gets too convenient sometimes to overlook things that are not so quantifiable, like poetry and the humanities. Thank goodness we have the ability in the educational world to see people like Yolanda Wisher prove the importance and value of the precipitates of education that may not always be so data-driven. Imagine, just imagine a world without music. And what is poetry but music? Thank you, Yolanda Wisher. Thank you to her family. Thank you, Yolanda, for taking the North Penn education that you received to continue the ripples of influence well beyond just the North Penn community. OK. Things are about to get very dramatic in here. We have some people coming up that are no strangers to this stage, or to a microphone, or to this auditorium in general. Public education is about providing outlets for the whole child. We have heard tonight from a coach, from a poet, and now we get to hear from the area of arts and performance, right here in the house that Loudon built. <laughs> Introducing Introducing our next inductee is current North Penn High School teacher and theater director, Andrea Lee Roney, and North Penn High School theater co-director and retired teacher, Deborah Buckner. Thank you to all who are here this evening, friends, family, members of the North Penn School District administration, staff, and family, because that's what we are. We are very honored to be here this evening in the presence of all three Knights of Honor. But tonight, we get to speak about one. My name is Andrea Roney, and I was very pleased with my cohort in crime, Deborah Buckner, to nominate Ms. Cindy Lavin. Deborah. Good evening. My name is Deb Buckner, and I'm a 1973 graduate of North Penn. I am honored to introduce my friend and mentor, Cynthia Loudon. Cindy came to North Penn School District in 1967 to teach high school English. Her first year, she assisted Don Wack with the senior play, which was performed in the auditorium of what is now Pendale Middle School. Just two short years later, Cindy officially became the North Penn High School theater director and teacher, and remained at the helm until her retirement in 2005. During her nearly 40-year career in North Penn, Cindy's passion for theater, strive for excellence, commitment to her students, and endless energy and creativity fostered an environment where students could express themselves, gain confidence, collaborate with classmates, and very importantly, form friendships that last a lifetime. Cindy, you truly are a trailblazer. In the early 70s, you started the Green Room Club, an extracurricular theater appreciation club, which included performing, and taking field trips to New York City. Also during that time, an inspired group of students went to high school principal Walton Landis to petition for a drama class to become part of the curriculum. 
This would become the beginning of educational theater in North Penn High School. With the opening of the new high school in 1971 came the first spring musical, Anything Goes. I was lucky enough to be in the chorus of that show. In addition to wearing the hat of director and producer, Cindy was also the costume designer, the set designer, the light designer, and the sound engineer. Amazing. As the program grew, Cindy created a design team that even after 40 years later is filled with North Penn Theater grads. Cindy took great pride in this new auditorium theater space, making sure that it was very safely secured every evening at the end of rehearsal. I am sure many of us sitting here in the auditorium tonight as part of that team remember being here until the wee hours of the night searching for her keys. <laughs> we did always find them. Cindy also proposed the idea of a free dress rehearsal performance for senior citizens on the Wednesday before opening night of the spring musical. Yes, that is the gold card performance, which has become a special event valued by members of the North Penn community. It is said that a good leader enables the full potential in others. Cindy Loudon is a true leader. She pushed me to see things about my own leadership capabilities and aptitude that I had not yet discovered. Working with hundreds of students, many who are sitting in the audience tonight, she took an active interest in our success and pushed us to seek our potential. Through the creation of children's shows, the roles of student directors, the establishment of the Pennsylvania Thespian Troupe 5464, she provided opportunities for students to direct, to choreograph, to design costumes and sets, to run lights and sound, and explore their own leadership skills. Many former students are involved in North Penn Theater today. Volunteerism is very important to Cindy. In addition to theater classes and productions, Cindy encouraged students to give back to the community. They participated in cemetery walks, community days, Pennsylvania Days of the Arts in Harrisburg, Tales for Tots, and countless other events. Her example also encouraged parents and former students to be involved in North Penn Theater. Cindy never asks anything of anyone else that she doesn't do herself. Cindy's volunteer journey continues at the Pearl S. Buck International, where she chairs the fundraising events committee and community projects for the Volunteer Association. She also co-founded the Pearl S. Buck Writing Center in 2010. Once the chair of Harmony Theater Incorporated, Cindy now volunteers as a member of the Harmony Theater Board, which serves a 55-member nonprofit theater program for adults with special needs. Cindy, your legacy at North Penn High School lives on through the many traditions that you established during your career. There's very much a feeling of family where no matter what your role is, whether it's on stage or off, your contribution makes a difference. Before every performance, standing in circle backstage, hand in hand, there is still a sophomore senior break. As you shared with your students long ago, it represents all the incredible people who came before us and the amazing people who are yet to come. Thank you, Cindy Loudon, for enriching my life and John's life and that of our children, Christopher, Matthew, and Amy, and so many other lives in the North Men community. Cindy and my paths crossed professionally numerous times until my younger son became involved with North Penn High School Theater. 
As a parent, I helped raise the funds needed to get the 2003 fall show Zombie Prom to the International Thespian Festival in Nebraska. And yes, there's still green stuff upstairs on the third floor. During the hectic spring of fundraising, Cindy asked me if I had ever considered teaching high school. My honest answer was no, which of course was not the right answer for Cindy. By the fall of 2004, she, with the help of Dr. Ann Kaler and Dr. Carol Breslin of Gwynedd Mercy College, had me registered for the Master's of Education program with certification in English at Gwynedd Mercy, training with David Page to be a North Penn School District substitute, and hired as an adjunct at Gwynedd Mercy to help fund the master's tuition while getting me assigned to be her student teacher in the spring of 2005. For not accepting my first response, Cindy, I am internally grateful to you. She opened the door for yet another student, and by the way, used every influence she had to have me named as her successor. I inherited one of the finest public school theater programs in the United States, the rareness of which I appreciate more each year as I work nationally with the Educational Theater Association and other professional organizations. Cindy created five theater classes in various areas of acting and technical theater, including dramatic literature and theater history, plus a special education theater program. Cindy was a pioneer in integrated classrooms before others were even thinking of it. Merging special education acting classes with the drama major class for a production? Who did that? Cindy. Even having a major theater class, not just minor classes in theater, was unique. Beyond the classroom, she encouraged Ryan Williams' graduation project idea to do a fundraiser for Broadway Care's Equity Fights AIDS in 1999. After the BC EFA's gala's success, she and Mark Weinstein, sitting beside her, then a North Penn High School thespian president and soon to be a student leader for Pennsylvania and international thespians, spread the idea of fundraising across America. In 2012, thespians achieved $1 million raised and counting with annual donations of over $100,000 to BCFA, and to date, North Penn thespians have raised over $80,000. From these efforts, the BCEFA National Organization created a full-time director of education, and Cindy received several awards that hang outside the theater when you leave tonight. Finally, there were the North Penn High School theater productions begun under her leadership in 1971, and which are recognized by our community and many throughout Pennsylvania and the United States for their professionalism and artistic excellence. You also began the partnership that continues today. Cindy, you inspired students and sent graduates out into our school district, our community, and our nation to become amazing teachers, professionals in theater, radio, television, and film, both on stage and backstage, CEOs and leaders in major industries and companies, large and small business owners and leaders, politicians and advocates in many areas of political and social discourse, community servants and volunteers, and parents raising the next generations. And yes, that's generations with an S. You help students find their passions, their voices, their empathy and compassion for others, their self-awareness and confidence, and their pride in settling for nothing less than their best effort. Before the research on the effects of arts education confirmed that the arts teach the 21st century learning skills of critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity, you advocated for arts education because you intrinsically knew the positive effects on students participating in theater and the other arts. Teachers strive to positively motivate and impact students in some way. We can only hope that we make a difference. Ms. Loudon, Cindy, 
the waves of your impact on your students are still flowing outward to generations not yet born. Well done, good and faithful servant. Now, with a great deal of pride and not a bit of trepidation, we give the mic to Cindy. <laughs> They gave me the mic, Bert. If you really know me, you know that I like to be backstage or standing in that back watching the kids' shows. However, there's an old theatrical acceptance speech by George M. Cohan in Give My Regards to Broadway that has always stuck with me. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My sister and brother thank you. Anne thanks you. My daughter Leanne thanks you. And I thank you. I am still astounded at being nominated and for receiving this great honor tonight with Mr. Swimming himself. Rick, I don't know if I should remind you of the time we came down and did a one-act play in the pool. You might have tried to get rid of that. We almost drowned. <laughs> and we were losing, using a live mic, Bert. <clears throat> and with a wonderful former student and famed poet laureate, uh, Yolanda Fisher, Wisher. With all the past award winners who have been honored the last two years, it's both a humbling experience to stand here when I know so many, many other persons in our school district who deserve it and will hopefully follow in our steps. I'm being honored here tonight because of our theatrical productions in this great theater. Yes, it's always been a theater, Dr. Dietrich. Always to me. However, when I was hired, I had never, ever been to New York City. I had seen one professional show, a bus truck down out in Indiana, and I had only seen one high school play in my high school. I was a jock. My only acting experience was as a sixth grade uh, actor in a Christmas play, and I was the jack in the box. But I couldn't get out of the box because my dad made the lid too heavy. <laughs> so I improvised my lines, shouted, shouted again, because I knew they hadn't heard me the first time, and the audience howled, and that was the birth of my theatrical career. In 1969, I was called into the old high schools, the old North Penn High School's principal's office. Now, you went every couple of weeks anyway to receive your paycheck. And Mr. William Jacobs, I believe, is in the audience tonight, and he's my number one longtime fan, and he always signed it. Principal Walton Landis said to me, Miss Loudon, do you know anything about this student petition that's requesting you teach some drama classes next year? <laughs> no, sir. This is the first I've heard about it. Well, what do you think? Do you want to? There are some rooms above the band room where Bali is. You can have those. Uh, do you want to? We also, Miss Loudon, was very formal in those days, want you to teach drama and speech at the new, big, great high school, the new North Penn that opens. And that, my friends, was the beginning of North Penn High School Theater. When this new high school opened, the green room was given to me as a classroom. And one fall afternoon during a play rehearsal, Ken Weir, I believe is in the audience tonight, told me about his newest and biggest exciting idea. He wanted to have the district, the North Penn School District, 
gold card program and show, could I get a musical ready in the spring? Uh, he'd take care of the cookies and the drinks, the iced tea. He was quite the salesman. Sure. That, they had my back, and I, who had never sung in a chorus or played in a band, needed help. I had never, first time I'm saying this out loud, I had never, ever directed a musical before in my life. But I never admitted it. Tonight, as I said, is the first time. So, at that time, quickly, I've got to do a spring musical. I better improvise. And all this was before Google and the DIY, you know, things that you can get on, on shows now. Our first musical, the show would go on, and they always do. So, one of my reputations, a few of you might remember it, is I can talk anybody into anything. I had, didn't have much time. You know, it's the fall already. We're doing a fall show. I talked Bolly Thompson and Alvin Schmidt into helping me. It was also their first musical. The stories I could tell, I don't believe Alvin ever came to in one of the shows. <laughs> Wasn't his type of music, but he trained those singers. I talked the shop teacher, Dave Miller, into building me a two-story ship with some inner rooms that could support 60 kids Oh, put a railing around it so the kids don't fall off and build a boarding plank so that the kids could enter from the audience. He built it like my dad, big, solid, and heavy. We just never told Deb D that part of it was cardboard. Anything Goes was born. We wowed everybody, created memories for the kids and for this community, and launched a professional performing arts careers of so many ki kids and grads. The stories I could tell. I was always asked, how will you ever top this show? This show's as good as Broadway. You should take it on the road. And of course they always ask, what's your favorite show? Well, the secret is, choose different types of shows. Play to the talents of the students, the actors, and have a fantastic staff uh, to make you look good. It's always, my favorite show is always the show I'm working on, because I've got to give it 100%. Into my life came a young Steve Frederick and Davis Giersch, who had been hired to create the best fantastic bands and choruses programs possible. They also told me, they were told when they were hired, you have to do Cindy's musicals. <laughs> I took advantage of them. But we began a fantastic team of talented and successful performing arts uh, teachers. I also had many fantastic parent volunteers who were always willing to sew costumes, right Lou? Into the wee hours of the morning to create props and hats. And I had fantastic parent volunteers who would act as my secretary, type, cut, paste, fantastic programs, Andrea, Carol, uh, before computers. Parents who would, as Andrea mentioned, run fundraisers. Parents who would feed us. We created a large theater family, and I enjoyed their friendships, and I enjoy them today. Our stage crew kids, they brought their skills over. I, you know, I'd only built, you know, simple sets. But those kids would come and they would design, build, paint sets, design the lights and the sound system. We were on a roll. And then new principal Ken Schmidt allowed us to grow. Ken always walked every set that we built. And no one, he was my lucky talisman, and no one ever got hurt. It's all about the kids. Their college resumes were very impressive. Here they were allowed to be in dramas, comedies, musicals, crew experiences, fantastic opportunities in this 1,700-seat auditorium. 
Uh, the Lansdale Community Concerts, as you all know, brings in fantastic world talent. Uh, Jimmy Finnemeyer's mock political conventions. We began riff here in this auditorium. Talent shows, people remember gong shows, lip syncs, whatever was performed in the auditorium, my kids and I worked it. If a show needed gym bleachers, sports uniforms, and equipment, it was always Doc Ryan to the rescue. If the show needed maps, globes, science equipment, a library scene, I mean a complete library scene, cafeteria trays, all of my colleagues would step up and happily provide them, and then they'd come to, to see them in the shows and brag then, this was a star on that stage. Of course, the shows have provided, I understand, uh, some hilarious Cindy stories. What could she possibly think of putting on the stage next? Because I never saw a play play. I always was doing it like a film, OK? So Oklahoma, when the stallion came out on the stage, I mean a stallion, beautiful blonde stallion, came out on that stage, the audience was so surprised, they clapped and applauded. Why well, hadn't rehearsed the horse for that? And that horse went up like this, and I thought, that horse is coming right into that pit. But Steve hung on tightly, and he got that horse down, prancing, and I'm still praying. And then every night after that in Oklahoma, when the horse came out, it went up like this on its own and took its bow. You can train animals, too. Then there's the pig incident from Little Abner. So help me, it was in its cage, it was locked, the, state, the auditorium is dark, it got out, they are smart, it wandered, fell off the stage, played the entire show in Little Abner with a bruised snout, and that morning, being paged, Miss Loudon, come to the auditorium. You know that that pig had run around and, you know what, all over this auditorium. <laughs> South Pacific, I decided, needed an ambulance and a jeep for all the sailors to tinker with. Remember John Strobel? Do you remember the two tons of sand right down here where I'm standing? Mm hmm I thought, you know, Greece. Greece needed a working caddy. It needed bleachers. And Kevin, I'm sorry, um, the baseball team at that time did without their bleachers for at least two weeks. And then we surprised the entire audience when the North Penn Marching Knights came in every door of this auditorium playing 76 trombones. I still get people who comment on that. So great. The theater staff that I've been so wonderful to have always tried to bring something new for each of the shows to educate our audience. I remember the audience gasping when they could see through a real scrim and look into Maria's second floor bedroom. Remember, Anne? I remember the flying scenes that not only went up, but out over this auditorium in Peter Pan. I have always been truly blessed to have a fantastic, dedicated, hardworking staff and parent volunteers. Nothing was ever too much. However, one of the best days of my life was when I coaxed a former North Penn Theater dancer into leaving her New Jersey teaching job and become our full-time choreographer. Her stage door Johnny, husband, came along and signed on eventually as our tech director. Thanks to Deb and John Buckner for joining the theater staff. Thank you for remaining with the theater all these years. Thanks also to Jim O, who brought his lighting design skills back home to us and joined the staff. He too is on the staff. Out in the audience, there are at least 10 former staff members. I thank you for coming tonight 
and being so much a part of this. Then we got another new principle. And this new principle demanded excellence. Dr. Juan Bon, who hugged me earlier tonight, challenged all his faculty and students to go for more. And he led the way. We talked him into taking a starring role in West Side Story. How many directors, how many teachers ever get the time to tell your, direct, your principal, learn those lines? And if you forget them, I don't want to see it. Come up with something. And he did. I remember it. Okay. North Bend Theater became better because of you, Juan. We became, to march towards excellence, a member of the International Thespian Society, as Andrea said, founding the Thespian Troupe, 5464. And we had the national stages. We developed state and international leaders, scholarship winners. Thank you, Ryan, Ryan, and Mark. However, my happiest and best memory of Dr. Bond will be the show that he lifted up and carried around my newly adopted five-month-old daughter, Leanne, and showed her off to a cheering crowd. I was quite surprised by her when she came tonight. So Juan, you can say hello tonight. I don't think you'll be able to lift her and show her to the audience. <laughs> I will always bleed North Penn Blue. I am so proud to have taught here. I thank you for the tremendous support of the North Penn School District Administration, the high school faculty, the staff, the support staff, I thank you to this entire community who love and appreciate great theater and fill these squeaky seats. There's supposed to be a laugh there. I paused. <laughs> I would like to congratulate my former parent volunteer, thank you, my former parent volunteer and North Penn Theater's current director, Andrea Roney, herself a recent winner of a very prestigious Nobel Teaching and Theater Award. And now I'm going to ask you to look around this theater. Look to the ceiling. Look to the walls. Look to the stage. Can you feel the past? Can you see the kids, the sets, the lights, the costumes? Can you feel the presence in here of fantastic performances by fantastic students and a staff that loves them? I can. Thanks for the memories. Cindy, I present this to you on behalf of the school district. It reads, North Penn Knights of Honor 2018, Cynthia L. Loudon, for making a significant contribution to the North Penn School District, the community, and her chosen career. Congratulations. See Pete Nicholson, our principal over there. See, the thing is, we are so darn protective and afraid these days. I want more horses and pigs in the auditorium. I'm like, those, I mean, that's got to be the good old days, right? Come on. Loosen up a little bit around here. Cindy Loudon is North Penn. I really don't know any other way to say it. And the names that she mentioned in that speech Names from Juan Bond to Steve Frederick, from Don Ryan to Bolly Thompson, they all shaped 
part of Cindy's experience here and part of all of our experiences here. In fact, Cindy mentioned baseball, so I'll just want to talk about baseball for a second again. The Philadelphia Phillies have a very famous mural that was painted, and it's a scene in the locker room. And in that locker room are all the great Phillies of the past, and they're standing around. It's like Richie Ashburn is standing there talking to Shane Victorino, and they're having all these conversations. There's a whole story behind the mural, and it's the past, the present, all in one setting. So I'm going to get in trouble probably after this, but after hearing Cindy's speech, I think North Penn needs something like that. I think we need a mural where maybe Bolly Thompson is talking to Ted Heller, where Bill Bartle is in a screaming match with Selma Robinson. <laughs> I mean, that happens every day. Where some of our legendary figures are shown shaping what North Penn is today. I can picture it, I can see it, and I think we can make it happen. But Cindy, first of all, thank you for losing your keys. That's something that I think all people do, and now everybody feels like they're not out of the normal there, so that's, that's good too. Cindy, thank you for building all of this and for always taking a genuine interest in everything North Penn. Cindy is very good at Facebook, and she's very good at staying in touch with people and showing genuine interest in what everybody is doing, past and present, at North Penn. Cindy, you just flat out get it, so thank you very much. And now, before we wrap things up, it is my pleasure to introduce to you one final speaker of the night. She is one of those very important parts that makes the system of public education run through her volunteerism and overseeing what we do here every day. Here tonight, representing the North Penn School Board of Directors, is school board member Mrs. Julianne Romich. It's nights nice like, like these that make um, service on the school board worth it. I'd like, on behalf of the entire school board, I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here and for being a part of this very special event to, to honor tonight's honorees. Many of you, have, the speakers who've come before me tonight, have given such lovely tributes. So I'd like to end by thanking the honorees for allowing us to honor you. It is so important for the children in this district to know your stories and to know your commitment. Rick, my daughters are swimming in the pool tonight. They just joined the North Penn Aquatic Club for the first time. Last night, my daughter came home beaming but exhausted after swim practice. She listed off all the sets she had done, and she said, I never thought I could do that. We had a wonderful conversation about how the coaches would never ask her to do anything that they didn't think that she had the ability to do. And maybe she should take a moment and believe in herself as much as they believe in you. For our honorees tonight, being able to tell your story gives us the, the opportunity to share that commitment and, that, and help children, the 12,690 students in our district, and give them that opportunity to believe in themselves the way that you've been able to share your service and your commitment and your gifts with us. So on behalf of the school board, thank you all for coming. Thank you for all of the honorees and all of you that you've given and continue to give to our school. Thank you. All right, just a few more final thank yous tonight and then everybody can go celebrate. Thank you for all of you for being here tonight. Thank you to the North Penn School District Office of Community and School Engagement. Thank you to the North Penn television staff, to all the technical staff on hand tonight. They're all in the back room there. They, nobody ever sees them, but they make all of this happen. Thank you to the School Board of Directors for District and Building Administration. Thank you for making this possible. Thank you to the custodial staff who never gets the recognition they deserve when we have big events at North Penn High School. And of course, thank you to all of tonight's honorees and tonight's speakers. Please give one more round of applause for Rick Carroll, Yolanda Wisher, and Cindy Loudon.
out in the concourse tonight, there are hors d'oeuvres and refreshments for everybody as you make your way out. Also, you can see the wonderful display of all the Knights of Honor recipients that are on the wall. It's a brand new display this year, just to the left of the windows, where this year's honorees are highlighted. It's been, I think, to say it's been an inspiring night is a vast understatement. I hope that as this Knights of Honor ceremony continues to move forward year after year, that we find more and more ways to have more people hear from the greats of the past. Because I know as a teacher who, I, I still feel like I'm young, but I'm not. I've been here for 17 years and I get older every day. But for the people who are here now, the students, the teachers, to hear what has happened here, to hear the crazy roundabout ways that legends are born, I think is truly inspirational. So thank you for sharing those stories. I hope that we continue to find ways to bring everybody here to hear those stories in the future. It's been a great night, and all those ripples of influence that have been created, well, they just continue to grow bigger and bigger each and every day. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations once again to honorees, and have a great night.